Irish by three points last season. Should be a great night for some women's college basketball. The fourth to last regular season game for both of these two teams is underway from South Bend. Irish win the opening tick. Tip and they quickly get the ball to Hannah Hidalgo, their star freshman point guard. Anna DeWolf with the game's first shot. She leaves that triple a little bit short. Clemson going in transition. Ruby Whitehorn plays it to the top of the key. There is Robinson working it into the post. And Oyang Yang swings it out. Whitehorn tries to drive in. She's fouled by Sonia Citron. As expected, both teams starting out in zone. Clemson in that traditional matchup zone. Notre Dame is going to have to attack the top of the key, and so is Clemson, vice versa. And a bigger part of there was good defense by Citron. She actually drew the foul, and so we get the game's first turnover tonight. This Irish team loves to be aggressive on the defensive end near the top of the country in steals. Now it is Citron committing the offensive foul. So Sonia Citron giveth, and she taketh away as well. Maddie Ott joked in shoot around this morning that she was going to save that exact call for the game and her position coach you can see on the bench is laughing at that. I know they're proud of her for that one. Here is Robinson, the second all ACC team member giving it off. Harris pulls up from three, had that one blocked. It's tipped to the sideline and will stay on this side. That possession's a very important 50-50 ball that Notre Dame has to come up with. Notre Dame team outstanding at winning those 50-50 battles and those hustle races. Near the top of the ACC in both rebounds and steals. Turnover margin is second in the conference as well too and, and Hidalgo defending there, a big reason why. Three point attempt is down. Robinson drains a triple. We have our first points of the night. Amari Robinson coming alive early is really important for this Clemson team. Amanda Butler told us at shoot around that she felt like she didn't get the ball enough against Pitt. And assistant coach Joy has this scout for Notre Dame as Maddie Westbell contributes the jumper. It's important to get Amari, the Ro Amari Robinson the ball early tonight. There is the Clemson starting lineup. A couple graduate students in the backcourt in Harris. And Robinson, who is someone who can really be used all over the place. There's a beautiful feed down low, and Whitehorn puts in the alley-oop. Great execution, great screen in the back of the zone. Hidalgo looks to go down low. Kylie Watson spinning for a lane. Dangerous pass there, and it is knocked away. Harris on the break, lays it up and in. Good active hands by Harris. I'm excited for this matchup between her and Hidalgo. There she goes early. That one's off the mark, but Westbelt for the rebound. Well, Clemson got off to a strong start in its last contest. Had a decent sized lead in the first quarter over Pitt as Hidalgo, while falling, somehow gets that one to go. Tough one by Hidalgo. She recognizes the defense coming over and floats it. Little teardrop. Been a chaotic first couple minutes here as that jumper falls from the elbow and Inyang gets it to go. I love the high post jumper. They worked on that this morning at shoot around. It's gonna cause the, the bottom of Notre Dame zone to move out. Good look there from Matty Westbell, but it goes off the side of the rim. Tigers have been Inconsistent in ACC play this year. They got off to a tough start in conference play. Won just one of their first nine. Then took three straight. Now they're back on a bit of a losing skid. But have played some close games in there as well as Adalgo was looking to go for the steal and score, but bumped into Harris. That's where Hidalgo has to be careful. She's a opposite reacher. Harris was dribbling the ball with her right hand and Hidalgo reached with her right. She's so good at picking defenders' pockets, but she has to be a little bit more careful when she's reaching with that opposite hand. Harris is an experienced point guard that's gonna pick up on that. Some early subs here for Notre Dame is their two main bench options, KK Bransford and Nat Marshall check in. Driving inside is Harris, and she gets the call. Irish crowd not too happy with it. Harris will shoot too, regardless. Harris getting downhill early, drawing the foul. 
on KK Bransford. She's going to continue to do that and keep putting pressure on the back of that Notre Dame zone. There are 66% at the line this year. She knocks down her first. Eric Bruton, Ashley Gloss, John Capolino, the referees tonight. That's a big deficit early. Sonia Citron picking up an early foul in this Notre Dame offense. Westbound tries to drive inside, gets that ball back. Some space for DeWolf. She pulls up a three, that one just short. I don't mind the misses from DeWolf. It's good to see her be aggressive early. Notre Dame needs more of that from her. That's a three ball again. Robinson drains her second from beyond the arc. And what a start to this game for Clemson. A 7-0 run. They've hit five field goals in a row. And the Tigers shell shocking this Irish team a little bit right out of the gates. Notre Dame needs to attack the gaps in that zone. There's DeWolf. That's a great shot. Gets the roll, too, after missing a couple of threes. She took that one inside, and DeWolf from close range snaps the 7-0 Clemson scoring run. I think she heard me on that one. <laughs> Would you agree? Well, she's someone who can play a big role when called upon. At 24 points a week and a half ago or so in a double overtime victory for Notre Dame at Florida State. Dolgo forced that one up quickly. Didn't get anywhere close to the basket. Clemson's going to capitalize off of those. Tough shots in transition are going to lead to buckets and allow them to set up in the offense. Notre Dame has to be more assertive in transition. Great Good. defense by Nat Marshall. Ball will stay with Clemson here. As we get a look at that last sequence. Here she is. Marshall has a length advantage on Robinson. She gets good position and gets the clean block. Inbound pass goes around to Harris. Neil Ivy doesn't care about that first foul. She's looking at the score. She threw Sonia Citron back in there early. Marshall with another active reach. Ball will stay on this side, but will step aside. About halfway through this first quarter. 14 to six, Clemson on top. We'll be right back from a year ago. Would certainly be quite the story if they managed to do that again, but the big storyline with the ACC is the amount of parity as you get a look at the standings here, about the top half of the conference or so, separated by just a couple of games, and some big ones coming up for the Irish as they finish with Virginia Tech and Louisville in this building. Right, four left for the Irish. They currently stand at six, finishing off with two of the higher opponents in the ACC. Again, I have to be careful with my words because they're all so close. Very little time left of conference play, but so much will be determined in that time, Notre Dame can finish anywhere between first and eighth, which says a lot about this conference. Tigers have just 0.7 to shoot here off this inbounds. They'll do it again after the kick ball. They've got a hurry and a forced pass down low for Harris was the only play. Notre Dame picks it off. Hidalgo weaving inside and out. Lobs for Marshall who draws the foul. Bound goes to KK Bransford. Cincinnati product at that ball to Hidalgo just barely, and now it is swiped away. And so this Notre Dame team continuing to look disjointed on offense. It's been a little bit of everything, really. Some four shots, a couple of turnovers as well. They sit with just six points through almost six minutes of play. Exactly what Clemson wants to do. They want to speed you up and make you make tougher decisions. Notre Dame is playing into the hands of Clemson right now. As you can see though, they have picked up their aggression on the defensive end as Harris pulls one, misses it. And a foul there that is gonna go against Michaela Elmore. Didn't need to do that as Vitron draws the free foul essentially. As we mentioned, Clemson got off to a hot start in its last contest, lost against Pitt, and really struggled in the middle portion of that game, got outscored 21 to eight in the second quarter. You can tell they've made some adjustments. They've been really aggressive in attacking the high post of Notre Dame's zone. 
Good to see Danielle Rausch back out there again. She's missed a couple of games as of late. That was Harris and Freeman colliding there, but Clemson keeps control of the ball. Notre Dame switch to man. They get it to Danielle Rausch, the grad student from Syracuse. Her and Elmore checking in at that last stoppage. Harris tries to work inside, nowhere to go on Westfeld. And it's going the other way. So both teams now in a little bit of an offensive funk. It's been over two minutes since either side put up points. This effort so far, certainly a victory for a Clemson defense that has struggled for most of the season. They've been solid on offense. They're in the middle of the pack in the ACC in most of those categories. Now, if we've seen, there's no lack of quality teams in this conference. Just looking at the standings a few moments ago. Marshall inside, swings one too long. Bransford and the foul. Big contributions off the bench for the Irish. KK Bransford got that second chance opportunity because of Marshall's tip. Marshall drives it, KK gets it back for the AM1. Bransford's overall scoring numbers for this year slightly down from where they were in her freshman season, but as we talked about in the intro, someone who Notre Dame is counting on a lot going down the rest of the season with the injuries they've dealt with. As Clemson working quickly in transition. Trying to get a basket right after the free throw with Whitehorn creeping ahead of the pack. Good recovery from Notre Dame's defense. Dangerous inbound, Citron got a piece. Good recovery by Ruby Whitehorn, she takes it out. Great defense, but another miss 50-50 ball. Clemson's 2-0 on the 50-50 balls. Roush to the corner. Double team there from the Irish defense. Roush back out. Three to shoot. Valentine down low. And just before the buzzer, Whitehorn lays it up and in. Naya Valentine active off the bench. That's going to be big for Clemson down the stretch. Ooh, that pass was almost picked off as well. Whitehorn getting aggressive on Citron. She kicks it out, DeWolf returns. Citron fighting through some contact. DeWolf pulls up, she knocks it down. Good patience by DeWolf, right off the shot fake. She got Clemson in the air, lays in the pull up Jay. DeWolf so far the only Irish player with multiple made baskets in this opening quarter. That's big for Notre Dame. Neil Ivey talked with us about contributions outside of the big three in Hidalgo, Westfeld, and Sonia Citron. So Anna DeWolf coming alive early. Nat Marshall has been active. That's everything that she's been talking about that she needs from this Irish team, given she only goes seven or eight deep. Yeah, both of these teams have dealt with some injuries throughout this season. Obviously, the big one for Notre Dame has been Olivia Miles' absence all season. But some other key depth pieces as well, like Cass Prosper, have been out for significant portions of the season. Same thing on the other end with Clemson. Amanda Butler told us that there's players playing from the other end of the bench, some really big minutes, stepping into bigger roles. So we're seeing kind of the same pattern between these two teams tonight. Five to shoot for the Tigers here. Harris dishes down low. Jump ball call. It will stay with Clemson. I thought Harris could have laid that one up. I thought she put in Yang in a little bit of a difficult position given all those Irish hands down there on defense. Harris a transfer from Pitt, someone who does love to distribute the ball, almost five assists a game on average. Nice deflection there from Bransford and Clemson in another tight situation with the shot clock. You could tell Notre Dame scouted that out-of-bounds play very well. KK Bransford, active hands, jumping in the passing lane, denying that pass to Maddie Ott. Great three-point shooter, so that's a good play by Bransford. And a five-second violation forced there. DeWolf with the on-ball defense, and both teams 
with some turnover issues in this opening quarter. Three aside. I guess whatever Neil Ivey said in that timeout worked. Notre Dame turning it up on defense. Citron too strong. She does get the whistle though. It goes against Eno Inyang. That's her second foul already. I like Citron getting downhill early. I thought in the past couple of games she's been passive. Notre Dame needs to look for her more early on. It puts a lot more pressure on the defense because their scout is so heavily focused on her because of how good she is on the offensive end and defensive end too, for that matter. Sonia Citron outstanding from the foul line this year. 90% entering tonight. 100% on her first two attempts from the line, and and into Wolf trying to force another quick steal. We've seen a lot of aggression from both defenses. She almost took us quarter. out. Yeah. <laughs> a little farther down the bench from where we sit, but energy level was certainly there. For the final minute now of this first quarter, Robinson. To the corner. Robinson through a double team. Cross court pass. Turnover on the travel. Notre Dame took away every option that possession. That is huge. That was five people collectively getting that defensive stop. So an opportunity here for Notre Dame to go two for one potentially. And into Wolf being checked on the sideline. They didn't have a bit of a cut. See the training staff taping up her left leg. I think the scorer's table got her. She's and, good to stay in though. And Marquez always ready at the end of that bench. Comes in showing some pressure as Notre Dame moves it up. Citron drains the three. Exactly what the Irish were hoping for, and they finally drawn back even at 16 aside. Great decision by Citron. Harris trying to get the offensive swagger back for Clemson. Instead, another shot is blocked down low. Amanda Butler talked talked with me about that this morning getting into the gaps of the zone but the second part of it is making the right decision and I think Clemson has done a good job of getting in there but in order to capitalize off that and execute they have to make the second correct decision Whitehorn looked down low I believe DeWolf got a piece of that pass Harris looks for space finds it and scores that's the right one from Harris I like she was aggressive looking to score instead of the pass first five to go in this first quarter Bransford looks for space, just off the mark. So Notre Dame trailing for most of the opening quarter, got it back to even for a brief moment. Clemson will take a two-point lead into the... Four student teaches eighth grade as part of her master's degree. The team actually moved practice up to 5 a.m. on her teaching days, and Clemson even has staff that have an alarm to get her out of the gym and into the classroom on time. Robinson said she's always wanted to be a teacher. She comes from a compassionate family. Her mom's a social worker, and her father works in a group home. Well, we talked with head coach Amanda Butler during the shoot-around today, and she could not have been more complimentary of Robinson, not just as a player, but as a person as well. She's someone with tremendous heart and someone who's stuck it out through good times and bad with this Clemson program, her fifth year, all with the Tigers. And it's something you don't see every day, especially in this area of college athletics. Not at all. It's very easy to hop in the transfer portal. And Amanda Butler said, even throughout the ups and downs of her time at Clemson, she never thought about that. She stayed, she stuck it out, and she said that says a lot about her as a young woman. So I know in a couple games they'll be honoring such an important piece to Clemson women's basketball now and for the upcoming generations to come through there. She's such an important piece for them. Seven to shoot for Clemson after the two Marshall free throws tied it for Notre Dame. Harris pulls up, tough shot over Marshall and she gets it to go. Very tough shot, broke down one defender, broke down the next and then hit a contested jumper. Great execution by Harris.
Tiny Westbound, Sonia Citron with a give and go. Some miscommunication here. Notre Dame's all five don't seem to be on the same page offensively. Saw some blank faces on this possession. Maybe they can correct it. Two to shoot for Westbound and almost made something out of nothing there, but was not able to get that one to go. Harris in transition, flying to the basket, but can't finish. Great contest by Citron. Clean contest, being smart, already has one foul, doesn't want to pick up the second. Westbound with a bit of a rush release, but the mar rebound goes right to Marshall. Kick out for Citron. DeWolf drains the three. DeWolf saved them on that one. Again, Notre Dame looks confused and frazzled on offense. I think Hidalgo needs to go get the ball at the top of the key and settle them in. Well, Hannah Hidalgo has been so good throughout the season as the leader for the Notre Dame offense, but last game against Duke, probably her worst half of the season was held scoreless in the opening 20 minutes of that contest. Did get things going in the second half, though. Helped the Irish to be just the third team this season to score 70 at Cameron. She goes to work down low here. Spins it to Marshall. Cannot finish inside and gets called for the foul trying to grab her own miss. Good use of the ball screen. Good read by Hidalgo. Marshall couldn't contribute and then picked up a foul. Kylie Watson coming back in. That'll probably change stuff for the Clemson offense coming down. It is Daniel Roche to bring it up, the Michigan transfer. Robinson Notre Dame. goes quickly down low. Another jump ball called. I was going to say Notre Dame back in zone. You can see they've done some make miss going man to zone, trying to make Clemson think, keep them on their toes a little bit. Irish defense was outstanding in the back half of that first quarter. Also forcing five turnovers as well. Whitehorn skips it down low, extra pass. Knocked down for, intended for Robinson, but done so with a kick. Roush knew that double team was coming when she went to the short corner. She was making the right play, had the right idea, but just couldn't execute. Robinson the quick pull up and almost got the roll. Rebound, knocked loose. Robinson comes away with it. Good hustle there from Roush. And Notre Dame forced a foul. Great hustle there. You can tell she's playing like she's been itching to get back out there. She's a senior leader for this team. Clemson's missed her a lot, especially her three-point shooting. You could tell she's very excited to be out there tonight, so good for her. Roush has only played in 18 of the first 32 games, or First 24 games or so, excuse me, this year for Clemson. That's just her third start of the season as well. Ott swings that one over. Whitehorn looks for room. That shot from Elmore was blocked, I believe. Robinson grabbed the rebound and she's found trying to put it back up. That's where Notre Dame runs into some trouble. So Kylie Watson picks up a foul. Marshall comes in. Marshall picks up a foul. Watson comes in, vice versa, and picks up a foul. Notre Dame needs to stop fouling with this short bench, especially those tic-tac fouls down there for no reason. They can't afford those. Irish already with three fouls for less than three minutes in this quarter. And Whitehorn makes them pay right off the inbound. Clemson's had great execution and great out-of-bounds plays. Kudos to their staff for those. Honey, see, that's Citron taking it inside. Watson gets it to go. Great feed by Citron. Got into that gap in the zone and made the right play. That's what Notre Dame needs more of. Whitehorn was looking for an option down low. There goes the pass from Harris for Robinson, but Notre Dame was able to knock it away. Citron to Watson in stride for two more. How about that duo coming alive? Kylie Watson coming back after picking up a foul, making her presence known, running hard in transition and being rewarded for it. Whitehorn from the elbow, too strong. 
This three-point lead for Notre Dame, its largest of the night. They trailed by as many as seven early on. That has been a theme at times for the Irish this year. They've had some slow starts, even at home. Citron from the corner adds three more. Good find by Hildago. Citron in the corner. She's getting hot. Clemson needs to come out further. They need to have a higher hand. Well, another quiet scoring start for Hannah Hidalgo with just the two points, but obviously has still found a way to make an impact with the beautiful pass right there. Clemson answers with a corner three of their own as Whitehorn drains that triple. Good look by Whitehorn. She wanted the elbow jumper that she took before, but she pers she's persistent. She stayed with it, took the next one, and it went down for her. Maddie Westbell with the immediate answer for the Irish. Their lead is five with just over five minutes to go in this middle quarter. Whitehorn with a pass back for Harris. Citron read it well. She has Hidalgo with it. And Citron takes it herself and draws the contact. Notre Dame up by five with two foul shots to come on the other side of our break. We'll be back in a few moments from South Bend. Half, excuse me. <laughs> Citron perfect so far on the night. She's made a couple of threes and a couple of free throws and she'll take two more attempts from the foul line here. After drawing a foul in transition following a turnover by Clemson just before the break. And Citron takes advantage. So she's the first player on either side of the double figures tonight. Shanette Harris trying to join her. She's got eight so far in this first quarter. Whitehorn with nine. Robinson hit a couple early threes. Hasn't done much since. And the Tigers turn this ball over. Clemson coming out strong and aggressive. You can tell they might have drawn something up in that timeout, but Notre Dame's defense the past couple minutes has just been suffocating. This is a Clemson team that has struggled at times this year, certainly to protect the ball. There are 14 out of 15 teams in the ACC in turnover margin. That's despite forcing a good amount of steals. A beautiful pass by Citron. It's up to 12 now for Notre Dame. Kylie giving it back to Citron. Whitehorn directing traffic. Harris calls Robinson over and returns it to her. Clemson's got to get a shot away. That won't count, even if it had gotten to the basket. Hidalgo gets a block instead. And back-to-back -back turnovers. Better recognition of late shot clock. They got into their horn set. Notre Dame defended it well, but they didn't go into that second option. They didn't have shot clock awareness. Second block of this opening half for Hannah Hidalgo. Truly is able to do it all on both ends of the floor. Bransford had some trouble handling a ball there. Simons Clemson getting the takeaway. And then they give it right back. Citron lays it up and in. Amanda Butler will call timeout. Irish picking apart the Tigers right now in transition as they boost this lead all the way up to 11. This is an all Sonia Citron first half. She's been great offensively and defensively. You can tell she's playing with confidence. She didn't think twice. She got that steal and she knew she was going up for that layup. That 15-3 run you saw there for Notre Dame on the graphic pop has come in just a three and a half minute span. They forced five Clemson turnovers during that time. And Sonia Citron still has not missed yet in this game in full on takeover mode right now for this Irish offense. Citron coming off a year of course where she was first team all ACC has been just as good this season, if not even better, averaging almost 16 points a game coming into this one, and certainly on pace to boost that average with the way she's going. 
Another steal for Notre Dame. Hidalgo poked it away, and DeWolf takes the foul from Inyang in transition. That just seems about the only way that Clemson can really slow Notre Dame down right now. Good decision by Inyang. That's an upperclassman decision. She knew uh, they had to stop the fast break. She had to use a foul. She can afford one right now, but they couldn't afford another transition bucket from Notre Dame. So good decision by her. That is the third foul tonight on Inyang. Got the start tonight for just the second time this season as Hidalgo drives in. Too strong on the floater. A good job by Robinson to find that rebound. It didn't end up in Notre Dame's hands, but Nat Marshall has been so active on the glass tonight. Has done it all at both ends of the floor. Some good defense down low as well. Robinson to work on Westbelt, and she lays it up and in. That's a great high post matchup. Both of those players can step out and they can play inside. Amari Robinson wins that possession. Marshall out. DeWolf likes to pull it from three. She's been aggressive in that all night. Good offensive board for Maddie Westbelt. Irish up by nine here, last two minutes of this opening half. Hidalgo gets a piece of this one, almost answered the Notre Dame turnover by forcing another one of her own. Every area of the court, Hannah Hidalgo always lurking, waiting to strike. Always, and although she's been quiet offensively, she still makes her presence so known. Here she is coming down in transition. After another nice play down low from Nat Marshall. Hidalgo is going to draw the foul, it looks like. Clemson Bench was hoping they'd get a charge. But Hidalgo will be heading to the free throw line. I thought this one could have gone either way. I thought Harris had position. Maybe our official underneath thought she was still sliding her feet, but I thought that one could have went either way. Too strong on that free throw from Hidalgo. Eighty percent from the line this season. Knocks that one down. A lot of growth from Hidalgo here. Last home game, she had a rough start offensively. You could tell she was hanging her head. She was emotional, but she stayed with it this whole time. Her head's in it. She's winning the mental game of maybe not starting the game off how you like. Good growth from the freshman point guard. Well, she had a tough first half in her name's last game against Duke as well, too. But, you know, Ivy said she liked how she bounced back and stuck with it. Had a good second half in that game to lead the Irish to a critical road victory. Harris hesitated, then found an open shooter. Elmore missing the three. Clemson pulls in this rebound, though, with just under a minute left in the first half. Hidalgo pestering Harris. And she's going to get called for the foul. The official was watching that one very closely. Hidalgo knew she almost got the first one, so she had a bigger chance of getting the second. Unfortunately, ends up with a foul. But again, that's that opposite hand, opposite hand reach. There's pros and cons to it. Second foul on Hidalgo. She'll shit, sit for these last 53 seconds. Elmore to inbound. Robinson, top of the key. To me, that's Whitehorn, beg your pardon. Lock gets it in that spot. Roush to the corner, another aggressive double team for Notre Dame. And another turnover forced. Great team defense by Notre Dame. Like I said, they've just been suffocating underneath. They want to trap that short corner, and that possession ends up in their favor. Active hands by both post players in Westbelt and Marshall. 
Irish have forced 12 turnovers in this opening half. Bransford with space. She'll pull up from deep. Left it short. This time Notre Dame wins the 50-50. They've got it with the shot clock unplugged. Great decision by Marshall. Good shot clock awareness. Donia Citron's been the hot hand for Notre Dame all first half. Looking to finish strong with a pass to Anna DeWolf, who cannot drain the last second three. But a strong... Shown is exceptional. It was a quiet first half for Westbelt as well. Had a couple of early shots and then went silent in terms of scoring. But Kylie Watson, who gave Notre Dame some good contributions, she's now three for three from the field with the opening points of this second half. Kylie Watson has been clearly assertive tonight. She's gotten the ball and has looked to score every time she's touched it. Maddie Ott pulls up from three. That one's just off the mark. Clemson hit a couple of threes early in the start of this game, both from Robinson. But they're just three for seven from beyond the arc so far. Obviously the good percentage, but the volume hasn't been there, as we said, it was gonna be a focus for Coach Butler and this team. There's an averaging seven made threes a game, fifth in the ACC. Watson got a piece of that rebound attempt, but couldn't haul it in. And streaking for this easy layup in transition is Amari Robinson. Good run by Amari Robinson. Got down the floor quick enough. Harris found her. There's that senior to senior dynamic that Clemson needs more of this second half. Watson couldn't handle that pass, but she was fouled by Robinson. Amari Robinson making some history actually in that first half. Set four field goals now in this game. Her third put her past Shandy Bryan for the fourth most in Clemson program history. The fifth year tire continues to climb the all time program leaderboards. Whitehorn open top of the key off the mark. Although a missed attempt, that's a good decision by Whitehorn. She's got to make Hidalgo come out of the paint. Too easy there for Maddie Westbelt going the other way. An easy layup and a timeout in response. And get attempts in transition and contribute on that end so Clemson can't set up in that matchup zone and make them run a 30-second shot clock, 20-second shot clock. There's Hidalgo with active hands. Third jump ball call tonight. All of them have favored Clemson. There's those 50-50 balls. Maddie Ottmull inbound. Quickly back from Robinson. I feel like 50-50 balls need to become an official stat. They're, they're so important in basketball. There's a nice deflection from Maddie Westbell to tip that one away. Irish have certainly gotten a lot of those in this game as well. 12 turnovers for Clemson could be even more. You can tell Notre Dame scouted their zone offense very well and what they want to look for. They're heavy on going in and out. There it is again. But Notre Dame's length on defense has bothered Clemson. They force a kick out from Whitehorn and a desperation three at the shot clock buzzer from Harris is off the mark. And out of bounds on its own. And Hidalgo still on one field goal. Aggressive take there, she can't finish. It will stay with the Irish. Good to see her still getting downhill and being aggressive. The defense has to respect her drive every time, even though she's been quiet offensively. It's going to open up more opportunities for other people in the Notre Dame offense. Here's Westbelt again. She turns and knocks that one down. Maddie Westbelt went off to a strong start in the first half, then went quiet. She's rediscovered her scoring touch early in quarter number three. That shot is money almost every time for West Belt. She works on it all the time. It's just become muscle memory at this point. All four of the shots she's made from the floor tonight have been very similar looks to that one. Sonia Citron from beyond the arc, just a little bit short. It's the first miss of the night for Citron on six attempts from the field. Even perfect on four free throws before that as well. Harris draws a foul there down low. 
Unfortunate situation down there. Harris put pressure on Citron, turned into a jump ball. Unfortunately, it looks like a foul. Therefore, the official has to respect that. Brantford and Marshall back in for Notre Dame. That pass right into the path of Citron. She spots it all go. This time she won't miss. As easy as it gets for Hannah Hidalgo, more points off of turnovers for the Irish. Impressive by Citron. She looked like she threw that one with her eyes closed. She took a hit from Elmore, but was able to still see Hidalgo leaking out. Irish more than doubling Clemson in points off of turnovers in this contest. They've got 15, their lead is 18, and they force another steal here. And a foul call as that is the reason for the pass from Westbound not having enough mustard on it. That was a possession I thought Amari Robinson could have pulled the trigger in the short corner. Don't allow Notre Dame to get into that trap in the short corner and take the attempt. Monty Freeman checks back into the game for Clemson. They're all going to do a quick double team and KK Bransford is called for a travel. I like the adjustment by Clemson to start trapping. Amanda Butler's trying new things, trying to take opportunities away in that aggressive Notre Dame offense, and Danielle Rausch, active hands, forces a travel on Bransford. Well, if you're Clemson right now, you have to feel this game starting to slip away, but they can get back in it if they hit shots like that. Big corner three from Ruby Whitehorn. She's just 27% from beyond the arc this season, but she's hit on two of three from deep in this contest. She's huge for Clemson because the scout is heavily focused on Harris and Robinson. So when Ruby Whitehorn comes alive and she can pull it from the outside and see it go down, she builds that confidence and she's going to get more aggressive on the offensive end. Notre Dame's going to have to come out and respect her. She's second on this Clemson team in scoring, averaging just under 12 points per game the highest rated recruit in the history of Clemson women's basketball. But this is a trowel on Dacianette Harris. Harris doesn't like that one. She got all the way to the rim. She wanted the foul call, but the official saw a travel. Amanda Butler doesn't like that one either. Butler, her sixth season with Clemson, hit win number 300 in her coaching career earlier in this campaign. Outstanding playing career as well at Florida. One of the best playmakers in their program history with over 400 assists. We have a gathering here, both sides. There's some technical fouls going on here. Potentially. I Notre think Dame does not seem happy but it's gonna be a tech on Whitehorn we'll see if there's any other fouls being called looks like just Whitehorn some confusion all around here it un it unfolded so awkwardly Amanda Butler talking with one of the officials there for a moment at midcourt so it is a tech on Whitehorn you know, we never like to see technical fouls. Unfortunately, I'm, I've been guilty of some of those before. But you just see the passion and the raw emotion coming out of this game. Both of these teams care so much. It's the end of ACC play. Obviously, we don't like the bickering and the extra. But, you know, teammates are always going to have each other's backs. And it's normal. Butler still upset talking with the officials. Certainly not happy with the call. Spelled split the free throws to put the Irish lead back to 16. DeWolf tries to go down low, has it tipped right back to her. Trying to navigate the pressure, finds refuge in Bransford. The corner for Hidalgo. Working on Whitehorn, trying to go up and under, and it was blocked. Freeman getting a hand on it down low. Hidalgo responds by poking this one loose. And it's going to be Notre Dame ball once again. 
The intensity is always picked up after a technical foul. You can see these two teams still going back and forth. There's a little bit of chirping, a little bit of talking. The intensity is definitely up in here. Steal number two for Hannah Hidalgo, who averages five a game. And Coach Ivy credited her with really turning around the effort of this Notre Dame defense and helping them become one of the best units in the country when it comes to forcing turnovers. She pesters again and gets it away again. Skips it ahead to Wolf to more. That's one player that I would not want to upset. Hidalgo is coming alive. We are taking a break here in South Bend. Best defenders in all of college basketball when it comes to forcing turnovers. And Notre Dame getting two more off her latest theory. Hidalgo to DeWolf. We've seen this before. Everybody getting in on the Irish fun. Hannah picking it up as we've seen the intensity pick up in this second half on both teams. Good to see her come alive, get her teammates involved as well. Clemson's already called two timeouts in this quarter. Had a technical foul a few moments ago on the Tigers' Ruby Whitehorn. As Harris gets some space and she knocks down that jumper. Smooth pull up off the crossover. Good job getting into that gap and executing by Harris. Westbound had Bransford cutting down low. Passing lane never opened up. Bransford with possession now. Hidalgo in a three her last time. Just a little bit too much on this try. The fouls go against Notre Dame. I thought Notre Dame could have utilized the high post a little bit. They had an open three in the corner for quite a few seconds, but it's too long of a skip. Get it to the high post, let the high post player make the decision, kick it to the corner, or they might have somebody on the block, depending on what Clemson decides to do in the back of that zone. Well, Tara, you talked about the emotions escalating a bit in this game with the tech, with the steals, and with Notre Dame opening up a bigger lead. As someone with obviously a ton of playing experience at the collegiate level, how do you keep your emotions in check when that tension level ra ratchets up? You just have to use it to your advantage and be smart. So if that, that means playing defense a little bit harder, picking up full court, and just keeping your composure and not doing anything, for lack of better words, dumb, as Neil <laughs> Ivey would tell us, be smart, use it to your advantage, and let it fuel you, let it motivate you the right way. Five to shoot for Bransford. Low post, Watson up and in. There's the utilization of the high post. They got it to Bransford. She was able to make the decision. She found Watson. Also might have had a corner three, but good decision by Bransford. Talked a lot about how in the first half, Sonia Citron was perfect from the field, but Kylie Watson hasn't missed herself yet. Eight points on a perfect shooting night. Harris too strong on a three. Hidalgo takes it, was unable to get that shot away cleanly. Ended up throwing it off the bottom of the rim there. Good defense by Clemson. She's coming in with a full head of steam. Great job not fouling, good solid defense. Now they can set up in the half court. Seeing Hidalgo trying to pick those spots to be aggressive. Does have five points in this quarter after three in the first 20 minutes. Kylie Watson coming in hot on the block, hosting her own block party. Good play on Harris. She's also come alive offensively, I and mean, we've seen her struggle a little bit on that end this year, Andrew. So great again. Neil Ivy keeps harping on other contributions outside of the big three. Great to see Kylie Watson. Really good percentage tonight. She looks confident, looks like a completely different player from the last couple games. Irish with seven blocks tonight, four of them coming from Nat Marshall. Smooth jumper by Whitehorn. I think that could have been an AM one. She's Clemson's leading scorer in this contest. 14 for her on the night. Hidalgo from the corner. Doesn't get it to go. Good effort from Westbell, but she couldn't get position around Elmore. Valentine back in, taking some of these point guard responsibilities for Clemson. Has some space to drive in here, but good defense from Watson with it all go helping on the back end. I still love the attack by Valentine. Great find by Hidalgo to Westbelt. 
Notre Dame attacking in transition once again. The lead for the home side back over 20. Notre Dame started off slow, but now you can see they've come into their own. They're playing for something bigger tonight. It's senior night. All five people on the court are contributing, and that's exactly what you want to see as a head coach. Well, this sequence for Notre Dame, really starting with that Duke contest is a big one. As we mentioned earlier, Notre Dame's last two games of the regular season might be one of the hardest two-game slates to finish the year in the country. As it all go with the easy layup off the stretch pass. But they finish at this building at least, but with Virginia Tech on the 29th and Louisville on the 3rd as we move into March. And I certainly want to be going into those games firing on all cylinders. And that makes this contest in between tonight against Clemson and then on the 25th at Boston College, their final true road game of the regular season. Even more important than they otherwise would be. Very important going into postseason, having contributions from the starting five, all five on the floor no matter what time. Very important. Each team is going to bring their best game, their best competition when it comes to playing down the stretch and going into postseason. So really good to see Notre Dame sharing the ball and everybody getting in on the fun tonight. Valentine, marked by DeWolf. Whitehorn tried to open up. Bransford does, in fact, force another turnover. Wasn't able to pick it off cleanly, but last touch by Clemson. And we go the other way again. Great team defense by Notre Dame. They haven't come up with a ton of steals, but deflections that lead to turnovers. Citron holding for the last shot here. Swings it to Bransford with nine to work. Bransford inside. Unable to get that to go off the back of the iron. Chance for Whitehorn at the buzzer. Did not get it off in time. It does not go down. With another dominant quarter for Notre Dame. The Irish in the draw. A strong contender for ACC Rookie of the Year. She's won Rookie of the Week 11 times this regular season, setting the all-time conference record. And even what's been a quieter performance for her offensively tonight, she's still made a huge impact. All right, she's taking a break now, but a well-deserved break tonight. I've got my Hannah Hidalgo hoops on as well. If you didn't see our halftime segment or our opening segment, such a big personality, such a, such a great addition to this Notre Dame program overall, and it's exciting to see what she's gonna do in the future. She's just a freshman, and sometimes I feel like we forget that. Had huge shoes to fill, of course, with Olivia Miles being so spectacular for this Notre Dame team the last two years, and then Hidalgo sliding right into that spot with Miles sidelined after her injury last spring. Right, filling in for the shoes of Olivia Miles is a very big ask. She's a very vital piece to this Notre Dame program, not only as a player, but as a leader. And Hannah came in and said, no problem. Harris good on her first three throw attempt. Notre Dame outscoring Clemson by almost identical margins in the middle quarters. 21 to nine in the second, 22 to nine in the third. That's got them in a comfortable spot in these last nine minutes or so. As KK Bransford gets open and connects for mid-range jumper. You look at the production of Notre Dame offensively now with Hidalgo as their point guard. Imagine what we're going to see with her and Olivia Miles on the court at the same time. That's going to be a nightmare for the rest of the country. Harris with a nice move there around Hidalgo. Arcing shot rolls off. Beautiful move by Harris. She keeps getting them on the one dribble crossover, going to her left. You can tell a lot of teams have forced her to her left, but tonight she's been getting to her left. In the, in the first half, I thought that she was being a little passive when she got into the paint, but she's been aggressive in this second half despite the score. She's persistent. She's keeping it going downhill. Yeah, she's been very strong tonight for Clemson. 12 points, one of three Tigers in double figures. Issue for Clemson tonight is they have not gotten almost any depth scoring. The big three for them, Whitehorn, Harris, and Robinson, all in double figures. They've gotten two points total from the rest of the roster. 
goes back to what Amanda Butler told us this morning. There's players playing in different positions. There's people finding new roles. And that's just going to be a part of the growing process for Clemson, who has been in some really tight games. They've shown promising signs this season in the ACC, and they're just going to continue to grow and come into their own. Yeah, Coach Butler said at shoot-around earlier today, she said the record does not reflect how good she thinks this team can be. And they do certainly have some talent to build around. As Daniel Roush getting taped up. They certainly have some good young players on this roster. Obviously, we talked about Whitehorn. Incredibly highly rated recruit, only a sophomore. Whitehorn's a great player. She has a huge upside. She's athletic. She's long. She can hit the jumper. Amanda Butler's in for a treat, given she's only a sophomore. Comes in also without its third and fourth leading scorers tonight. Mackenzie Kramer and Maddie Clues. Averaging over seven points a game this season. So that's certainly made that impact on their depth and put the strain on some of those players that you and talked on their about there. Three point percentage too. Now she says sometimes they shouldn't be as three point happy given some of their best shooters are out. They have to find some other options and make some different reads. Watson's rebound sets up an and one opportunity for Anna DeWolf. It's a quiet night to start for DeWolf, but she's come on, and even though she struggled from beyond the arc, has been able to find some offense getting inside. She saw her teammate was in trouble, needed help. Good cut by DeWolf. That's a veteran move, helping out her teammate. Good find by Kylie Watson, and great job. Body control, taking the contact, gets the and one, and contributes the extra point. It's all go pestering again. She poked that one loose for Harris. There's no backcourt. She has that look in her eye, Andrew. West Bell with an active reach down low. Honestly, getting to the point with Hidalgo where you don't even need to say it. You gotta just assume that it's there. Right, she's so aggressive. She's never gonna tone it down. She enjoys picking up people full court and I don't know the last time I've seen that. Yeah, even in the, the fourth quarter of a 25 point game, the time a game where you think a player might tone it back a little bit, she's still aggressive as ever. This time it's Clemson getting the turnover. Harris buys time. Three from Whitehorn off the mark. Tigers have struggled with their shooting from beyond the arc. We know they wanted to take fewer threes in this game, but have not been as efficient as they'd hoped after a, a strong start early in this second half. And a large part of that has been the effort from Notre Dame on defense to limit Clemson's offense. They forced a lot of turnovers, but also especially after Clemson got off to a strong start on offense, they've not given up a lot of open looks as well. Right, Notre Dame had a slow start. Neil Ivy called a much needed timeout. They turned it up on the defensive end. First quarter, 18 points allowed. Second and third, com third quarter combined, 18 points allowed. That says a lot. They were a well-oiled machine on defense. They first forced turnovers. Like I said, they weren't necessarily picking people's pockets, but they had first, second, third help rotations, deflections. You could tell that they were very intentional and they they adjusted very well as a group. It shows maturity and growth and response to what Neil Ivey is asking of them. Well, it's not the first time Notre Dame's gotten a boost from a wake-up call like that. They had a game early on in the season where they fell behind 8-0 right away, which Ivey called a timeout. And Notre Dame was a completely different team the rest of the way. We'll get some of those other numbers for the Irish tonight. 18 forced turnovers, seven blocks. Nat Marshall came in the game hot. She has four. Maddie Westbelt using her length as well. Everybody getting in on the fun. Kylie Watson's come alive this second half. Great to see the Irish perform better on defense than they have early in the year. Shows promising signs, especially down the stretch, when they're going to be in closer games than this. And it's going to come down the wire, over down to the wire, overtime might come into effect. There's a lot of pressure when you play in the Greensboro Coliseum, ACC tournament coming up. Good to see them on the same page defensively. 
That was something Ivy mentioned, of course, when she spoke with us as well. That ACC tournament, postseason, March Madness, it's all coming very soon. Irish will wrap up their regular season, of course, in about a week and a half. ACC tournament getting underway on March 6th. Right, only four games left, but so much is going to be determined as KK Bransford lays it in. So much is going to be determined over the next two weeks and leading into that ACC tournament. Notre Dame finishing off four more games. Two of those are Virginia Tech and Louisville, which will determine a lot for the Irish. Yeah, as we mentioned, it would take nothing short of a small miracle for the Irish to be able to repeat as ACC regular season champions. They may not even be able to with how certain teams might match up against others, but obviously a lot to play for the rest of the way. Seeding always important in terms of getting buys and also setting yourselves up for the easiest matchups possible and also just the general momentum aspect of things. Being right. on your A game going into the tournament rather than having to try to find it while you're already there. It comes down to so much more than wins and losses. We said before that Notre Dame can finish anywhere between first and eighth. That's a pretty crazy thing to think about because then it comes down to, okay, a lot of teams have won and lost to the same teams within the conference, and then it comes down to, okay, how many points are down the stretch. Such a special group of seniors for Neil Ivy. She spoke so highly of them. I asked her, what's one word that comes to mind when I mention your senior group? And she said, genuine. There's a variety of seniors this year. Becky Obinma's a transfer, Jenna Brown medically DQ'd, Sarah Cernugel's a walk-on, and then you have Maddie Westbelt and Nat Marshall who have been here since the start of the Neil IV era, and she said that they all just have a genuine love and care for one another, and it is consistently shown every single day throughout the ups and the downs. Well, we get our first look tonight at one of those seniors in Becky Obimba. Got the ball in Notre Dame's last possession. This time it's Westfeld pulling up from the foul line. Good to see Notre Dame still getting to their bread and butter despite the score. Clemson still pushing pace, still playing as hard as they can. Great stuff out of both teams as the senior off the bench comes alive. Becky Ovinma using her length and athleticism to get the block. She gets a nice roar from the crowd and appreciation. Obimba averaging almost a block per game. Had three earlier this year against Lafayette. Had three multi-block games with the Irish this season, including one in ACC play against Pitt. Quick inbound pass and shots good from Robinson. Got it off in the blink of an eye. Good take by Robinson. Good shot clock awareness. Harris looking for a foul there on the Obimba screen. She took a hard hit, but she kept going. That one in and out from Westbelt. It's already halfway down, and then popped back out. Harris eluding Hidalgo's reach at first. Hidalgo wanted to get that steal to her stat sheet. Again, he'll have to settle for the deflection. She makes a great play, but in her face, she's upset because she wanted the extra. She wants the steal. She loves the assignment of guarding the other the opponent's best players. That's something that you don't see a lot nowadays out of players defensively. Defense is hard, and Hidalgo thrives on defense. Big ovation from this Irish crowd as Manny Westfeld checked out, likely for the last time tonight. Of that senior class for Notre Dame, a lot of talented and decorated members of this Irish roster, but none have probably have had a bigger impact than Westbelt. Maddie Westbelt has been here since the start of the Neil Ivey era. Neil Ivey has talked so many times about when she would see Maddie in the stands as a little girl watching her older sister, Catherine Westbelt. Maddie Westbelt just knows the exact legacy of Notre Dame women's basketball, the legacy of excellence on and off the court. She thrives in it. She's become such a die-hard Notre Dame fan. Although she's a student athlete, she loves being here at Notre Dame. She speaks so highly of her experience here. And such a beautiful thing to see Neil Ivey have the opportunity to coach her and her sister and see Maddie come into her own after looking up in the Choice Center and seeing her in the stands cheering for Catherine. Both Maddie and Catherine in the 1,000-point club in their Irish careers. That's the 111th game for Westbelt with the Irish. She started all of them as well. 
If I'm not mistaken, the Irish crowd is chanting for Sarah Sernugal to enter the game. That is such a great thing to see on senior night. Sarah's parents are here proud in the stands of the Joyce Center. Good attack by Whitehorn, but better defense. She is the former Walkman that you mentioned earlier and someone who has become a fan favorite. And the crowd getting what they want as she heads over to check in. You can't say enough great things about Sarah Sernugal. I was her teammate once, and although she talks about how much we taught her, she taught us a lot too. She's a great person on and off the court, so deserving of everything coming her way. Three-point attempt off the mark there from Matty Ott. The second half struggles on three-point shooting continue for Clemson. There's another miss from Whitehorn. Clemson still battling. Credit them. Amanda Butler is going to coach until the very last possession. And that just says a lot about the culture and the foundation that she's built at Clemson. Despite the score tonight, she's a great coach. She's going to give it all to her players, expect the same thing in return. And that's going to carry her a really long way as the crowd gives Sarah a warm welcome into the game late in the fourth. A lot of the folks on their feet in South Bend. 11th appearance of the year for Sir Nugal. See what the call is here. Looks like it'll be Clemson's ball. Good cutoff by Michaela Elmore on the baseline. She knew Marshall tried to drive it. She took away that baseline. Came up with a good defensive stop for Clemson. Elmore thought about pulling that one quickly. Stead holds on. Ott leaves it short from three. Rebound cameras back to her, though. Good save for Clemson. Free throw jumper too strong from Inyang. Bransford brings it up. You have to credit both of these teams. By the looks of the game right now, you would not expect this large lead and only two minutes left as Brantford attempts one from three. Open look and she makes no mistake. And once again, another solid performance from KK Brantford off the bench, moves into double figures with that three pointer. Picking up right where she left off. Again, so important for contributions coming from all over the place for Notre Dame in the postseason. Good hustle from Elmore there to pull in the rebound. To the corner for Ott, too strong. Notre Dame ball with 98 seconds left. Irish surprisingly have actually been a little bit better on the road this season, 10 and two away from Purcell in true road games, or one and one in neutral sites. But the move to nine and three here at home on this regular season with two games to go in this building. Hidalgo tries to split the D, goes down hard. On attacking in transition, lays it off and foul will be called, looks like on Obimba. Great decision by Ott to keep it in transition. She drew two defenders, dished it over to Freeman, who will now attempt two at the free throw line. Freeman 64% from the stripe this season. First one off the front of the rim. Second one misses as well. Sir Nugle comes away with the board. It all go talking with the official there after that last no call after the Irish turnover. A minute 13 left, Hidalgo still competing at 100%. She wants every call, she wants every possession. She's showing her true passion right now at the end of this. Raymond pulls that one away. Bradley Kellerman getting her first minutes of the night. 
Ella Ranallo in as well. Irish will move up for only the final time on this night. Zernugel to Hidalgo. Quick pass inside, Obimba just short. You can feel the anticipation trying to get Sarah Zernugel an attempt on senior night. You have to love it from this Notre Dame atmosphere. Well, the Irish will have to shoot because of the steal at least one more time. Bransford gets knocked down, foul's called. Irish will be in action next on the 25th. Noon start at Boston College, final true road game of the season for Notre Dame. This performance tonight should give Notre Dame that confidence rolling into postseason, going to Boston College, which is a difficult place to play. Clemson, meanwhile, will have their senior day coming up on Sunday. Two o'clock start against Miami, also on ACC Network Extra. One last shot from Elmore and it rattles home. Well, it was a 14 to four start for Clemson. Notre Dame a bit shaky in the early goings, but you wouldn't know it by the final score. The Irish dominate in the middle portion of this night. And it's a 27-point senior night victory for Notre Dame. Great performance tonight by Notre Dame.